Okay, I'm live uh, here at the, uh, like it says, the new Napa store. And you see all the construction in the background. We're putting the uh, pegboard up now. We're finally getting to that. It, that's a little more complicated than I, I expected. Uh, <laughs> when you're going up against, uh, hey, how are you this morning? Now, is that Ponca? P-O-N-C-A, uh, or Poncha. Uh, yeah, it, it's a little more complicated going up against that glass than uh, I was expecting uh, because we've got to be careful. Of course, there's glass behind the insulation. We've got the uh, ribbon, the outside framing and everything that we're doing. And, hey, Tim, how are you this morning? And it's it can be, uh, well, hey, Greg. Glad to see you in here. It, it can be a little more complicated uh, going up, like I said, up against glass than it would be just regular. Uh, uh, it's it's better than, uh, you know, just, I mean, it's not better. It's, it's, it's a little more complicated than, like I said, just going up against uh, any kind of normal stripping. So I have to be careful with that. And, uh, well, the shop's going pretty good. That's what what I'm talking about. We're trying trying to, uh, uh, as you can see, let me lift it up here. You'll see we're putting, I don't know if you can tell, that's pegboard behind us there. We're going to pegboard the entire room here. I've got it all the way around us, along with the uh, insulation uh, that we have. We got we got metal, then uh, the the foam core insulation. And then, of course, the glass, the, the former glass that surrounded this showroom. And then we had to put the insulation again. And then we're, or we're uh, furring, <clears throat> we, we had to put the metal, and then we're having to fur up against the metal so we can uh, put the, uh, uh, we're putting the furring strips up so we can put, put the uh, pegboard up so we can have, you know, a little bit of space in between the pegboard. Hey, Mike, mechanic Mike, glad to see you in here this morning. But, uh, yeah, it's a uh, – <clears throat> oh, let me straighten up here a little bit. I get slouched down in my seat a little bit, get too comfortable. I'll, before you know it, I'll, I won't be but about three foot high because I'll be slouched down so much. Let me try to get – I'm trying not to let these lights uh, blind you in there. These LED lights are really, really, really bright in here. They're, they light up the building pretty good because we love them. Uh, it's it's been the best uh, addition that we've done is to put we we converted all of the fluorescent lights and there's there's kits out there where where you basically you take the uh, uh, you take the transformer out the LA, I mean the uh, fluorescent transformer out and you are ballast yeah ballast transformer you take it out and then you just insert uh, after you rewire it and everything the way you're supposed to then you can rewire it and uh, put put in these new LED bulbs. And this work working great. Light build was cut tremendously because I think each bulb was 60 watts uh, before, and now we're down to 15 watts per bulb. And there's four bulbs in each fixture. So uh, we've, we've cut it down a, a third, or a fourth, I guess, a fourth, because there was four four LED, I mean, four fluorescents in there before at 60, so it was 240 watts. Now we got it down to 60 watts per fixture. We got one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, uh, four, six, we got 24, we got 24 lights in here. So we cut it down a good bit. We cut it down. Now it's, uh, it's, well, I can't do the math in my head that quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you you can kind of figure out what I've got, but anyway, I've, I've cut the light bill down tremendously. These LEDs are just fantastic. Uh, if you ever have a chance to change out from fluorescent to LED, the the looms uh, it's so, they're so much brighter and and more efficient. I mean, it's just it's fantastic, and the life of them is way longer too. At least I hope so. At least I hope so, and that's 
that's the goal. But I mean, even even if not, uh, it's not gonna. We're not gonna have the the, uh, the problems that you have with uh, 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 fluorescent. And you know, if a fluorescent transformer goes out, ballast transformer goes out, that is the worst stinks that you could ever have in in a room i mean it'll just stink up a, a room something terrible and uh so that's that's what that's what we're up against but i hope everybody's doing good this morning we we've been working hard we worked out here at the uh, napa store ford dealership whatever you want to call it. i call it i you hear me call it ford dealership because uh i used to work out here as a young boy uh young man uh I was after I had left Carolina Freight. I'd worked at Carolina Freight for about twelve years as a yard switcher and a local driver. And after I left that, I uh, and I well, I went into I make it. I'm gonna make it brief. But I went into business for myself. Failed with the business. I bought a radio. I bought the local radio station and bought uh, and started a newspaper. Failed at that. But then I uh, after that I needed a job. So I came out here and worked at this Ford dealership. And, it, you know, here it is 30 something years later and I'm, I'm able to buy the building. It's, it wasn't a Ford dealership and I didn't, I wasn't trying to buy it, but I mean, it's a nice building. It's seven acres of land. It's got about three acres of paved parking. Uh, I got a nice size shop. I've got uh, the shop is probably, uh, I'm, I want to say, 60 or yeah, 60 by I would say 60 by 100. It's got tw it's a 12 bay garage, and then on top of that, we've got uh, uh, the parts and the showroom and the old office, and that that in itself is about 60 by probably 100, and then another shop behind that uh, that where they had a body shop. And I'm converting that into my truck shop. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, what we're going to do, Mike? We're going to we're going uh, that twelve bay garage. We're going to make that into a Napa Auto Service Center. I'm, I've got uh, some people that uh, I got. I got to hire ASC certified mechanics with Napa, and then my shop, also my diesel shop. We're going to be a, a Napa service center for you know large trucks. So they Napa's after me a good bit to do that if I can, and I and I'm, I'm I'm anxious to do it too. I think it'll be a good opportunity. I'm doing it in stages because I don't want to, you know, overtax myself. I don't want to get into a situation where I'm underfunded, because one of the worst things you can do, whether you're in the trucking industry or if you're in any other kind of thing, is to be underfunded on what you want to do or undercapitalized. Uh, You've, you've got to watch it. I mean, I've, I've done it. I've done it both ways, guys. So I've done it both ways. I've done it on the, just a skin of my teeth and made, made it on some things. And I've done it uh, with more funding and lost. Uh, you, you can, it, it's, it's a balancing act. You've got to understand your market. If you've got a, a unique situation, you can, you can be less funded than probably if you've got, if you're kind of joining the crowd type thing. Oh yeah. I'm going to be busy. That's for sure. Mike, I'm going to be real busy. It's, it's when we get, when we get the shop up and going, I, I know that's going to. Yeah. And that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm, I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to make use of the space and it, on the, uh, Video I had yesterday, I don't think y'all guys want me to walk around again, but on the video I had yesterday, uh, I, I walked around and, and kind of showed uh, the service center where we're going to put the service center. Right now, what we've got, we we bought out a, a, a uh, older parts store in Kings Mountain, which is, hey, JC. <laughs> yeah, that's right, JC. The, uh, uh, it does take a while to get stuff going. Are you on the road yet, JC? I hope you are. And and you're bringing, you must be because there's clouds coming in. And this is the first cloudy day that we've had in weeks. And it's cloudy down here today. Uh, 
So I, I don't know. Of course, the, the hurricane's coming in. Hurricane Florence, I noticed, is coming in. Going to hit the coast. So it may be pushing clouds up this way. But this is the first cloudy day we, we've had in a long time. Uh, of course, that's helping on the temperature. Are you left at 7.15? So let's see. If you left 7.15, you, have you made it? Uh, you had not made it to Cincinnati yet then, have you? You're still outside since you're not quite to Cincinnati. Uh, I would, I wouldn't think, but uh, uh, yeah, JC for you, for you guys who don't know JC Smith who sees JC Smith projects there on the chat. JC's uh, one of the hardest working guys you'll ever see out here. Go out there and check his, go out and check his page too. Uh, if you want to see somebody that knows just about anything about Ford's, he, he can do it. Oh, Cincinnati's five hours. Wow. Okay. I didn't realize it was that far from you. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, if you want, if you want to get uh, some ideas about how to, how to fix a Ford truck, go to JC's JC projects. He, he has rebuilt more Ford trucks. I'm talking about rebuilding from top to bottom. Uh, he, he goes in and uh, can really, really do do some great things with them. I mean, take bodies off, uh, you know, the body of the truck, body of the, uh, the, the uh, tail, I'm not telling what I'm trying to say, uh, the bed, the uh, truck bed, the truck, the actual truck. Uh, he can take all that off and uh, uh, just disassemble them. And he, he does, he does a lot of uh, uh, get maybe a truck that some people would consider completely salvage and make something out of it. It's amazing what JC does. So go check out his channels. I, I, I got onto his channels uh, oh, several months ago, a year ago, probably a year ago. I've been watching JC's channels and real, real interesting. So uh, guys, if you want to, you want to see somebody that can really do some work and give you some ideas too. I mean, I mean, he can, he can do it, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm just an old trucker myself. That's, that's my main thing. You know, I've been in the trucking business for most of my life. Started in 1967, 67, not, to, not, not to 77 or 87 or 97. I started in 67 as a teenager. Uh, I was still in high school and, you know, started, started uh, working at Carolina freight carriers who is no longer in business. Carolina freight carriers is now a division of ABF. Uh, ABF came in in the nineties. I think it was around 93, 93 and bought out Carolina freight and, uh, absorbed everything they had. So, uh, uh, that's, that's where they, they came into play. And then they they took all their terminals and and repurposed them. Hey Brian, glad to see you in here this morning. Uh, but uh, you know, Carolina Freight was a very strong company here in my hometown of, of Cherryville, and it, it's sort of ironic. And we're we're talking about this Ford dealership here. The guy that owned the Ford dealership, his brother was the well, his two brothers were the ones that owned Carolina Freight. They were the they were the two brothers, two of the Beam brothers that uh, uh, started Carolina Freight. The Beam family was uh, uh, the Beam family was you know, sixteen by eighty. No, mine's sixty by eighty. If you talk about mine, Brian, I don't know which which part you're talking about. Oh, JC's mo oh, moved to oh sixteen by eight. Oh, I see that. Wow, sixteen by eighty mobile home last night. Oh, wow. I, I didn't see that. Oh yeah, that's that's something. And you did that last night, and you were getting ready to go, JC. I swear, you're a working fool. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. JC needs two great alls. If if anybody's ever watched him on his great alls, now he's amazing on that. It scares the crap out of me sometimes. I've seen him pull trucks off of his uh, uh, off of his. Uh, roll back or, or his flatbed or whatever and pull them off. And I'm going, Oh crap. I think he's going to flip, but no, he, he does it successfully. And you know, it, it's, that's talent as somebody that's done it and practiced and everything else. 
uh, yeah, JC is a, yeah, Ponca J, JC is a, a busy, busy man. I, you'll see JC out here with his videos and, uh, uh going about, but yeah, if, if you ever want to see a channel that has got somebody that's done a lot of work, he's, you, you know, the man knows what he's talking about, but just watching what he's doing and, and seeing the success that he has, uh, he just, uh, put his injectors on his Dodge pickup this week and he's driving it right now. I think as we speak and it really sounded, uh, yeah, you need to check him out. If you want somebody that's got some good work and knowledge, JC's a hands-on type guy that, I mean, I don't know if he's got the, I think he's got more hard knocks degrees than he has degrees on the wall, but degrees on the wall won't fix a, a, a product. I can tell you that. And that's the difference. I, I see guys that go, oh, yeah, I've got to. And, and I have to go along with some of this, too. I, they, with Napa, they want the ASE certified mechanic. But I would put JC up against probably 99% of those and say, hey, I'll take his certification any day. But uh, And, you know, that, that's that's the difference between, I mean, you can see per, people with results. I mean, that's, that's, that's it in a nutshell. I mean, if you see results then that's – no, he doesn't work on cars. I don't – I've never – I I imagine he works on his own cars and he works on a few others, but uh, you see him mostly in trucks. I think J.C. specializes more in trucks. There's there's more uh, – I, I mean, it, he, he's hit a niche market. I mean, you, you think about it. The truck market, I mean, even Ford, Dodge – whoever they all are after the SUV. I'm not the SUVs, but the, well, SUVs too, but pick up the pickup truck market is the hottest market out there period. And, and most people have converted pickup trucks into a family car nowadays. I mean, think about it. I'm, I've got a couple myself. You get the crew cab uh, truck with a small bed, short bed, long bed, whatever you, and, get all the amenities and everything that you want in a car, you've got, uh, yeah. Um, Americans love pickup trucks. I mean, that's, that's it in a nutshell. I mean, I'm sitting here watching the main road, uh, right now I'm over here on, uh, this is a main highway <clears throat> that I'm at the, uh, places on this highway 150 right here in Cherville. And, you know, I see all the cars going by, and uh, I mean, I can count. I mean, of course, SUV is a big one. I mean, you see SUVs, you see minivans. Uh, that's still big. But the the average person no 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 longer has a sedan anymore. I mean, you think about it. The sedan uh, and Ford has actually dropped some sedans. I think Ford's dropping two or three of their lines. They're they're saying, you know, there's no use to uh, there's no use to build them. That's not where the demand is. Okay, there goes a Taurus wagon. I'm, I'm just I'm just looking at the ones going by and kind of viewing it, and then I. But you know, you'll see pickup truck, pickup truck, SUV, pickup truck. Uh, you know, on and on and on. Uh, yeah, you don't find as many. Uh, well, I don't know. You can still find them out there. Ford still has a good many, but I mean, there are a lot of pickup trucks with that six foot bed or seven foot bed. Uh, that sort of stuff. Of course, I guess somebody on a big Harley. <laughs> I guess they're getting the. Yeah, yeah. I guess uh, basic. The old. If if you look at trying to get just an old basic pickup, like like what I grew up with. Yeah, now yeah, like JC, the only one he has is his wife's van, and you know that's what that's what you get into. Uh, the the truck market is the market out there. I mean, the major manufacturers know that. Uh, the the sedans, as we used to know it, are going away. I mean, there's still some people that want uh, a sedan, you might say, or, or a four-door small car or something like that. You know, you still have a lot of the Toyota Priuses out there, but that's I think a lot of that has to do with, uh, you know, people wanting the hybrid cars. Uh, my daughter has a uh, hybrid uh, Hyundai. We we bought her a Hyundai, or got her a Hyundai for the business and everything about uh, two years ago. I think I think hers is a. I don't know what it is twenty fifteen. I think it's a twenty fifteen Hyundai 
Elantra. I, I can't, I don't know all these names, but <clears throat> yeah, the, the crew cab short bed with the six foot bed, that seems to be the, that seems to be the, uh, or six or the six and a half. I can't, I can't figure it out. That's, that seems to be the hot, hot ticket is that. And there is an inconvenience. Uh, I guess, I guess the reason it gets to that size bed is because of the looks. Yeah. Yeah. There's still a lot of commuters liking the small cars. That's like I was saying, the, uh, uh the Prius and, uh, uh, the time frame on me getting the, the, uh, Napa store going is probably, I'm trying to get it by October 1st. That's why I'm out here on a Sunday morning, getting ready to get started again. Uh, <clears throat> like I said, the, the pegboard is actually giving me a little more fit than I thought because of the fact we've, we've got, we've got to put a baseboard down and that baseboard is got to be glued. To, I don't want to, I, I don't want, uh, shoot these baseboards into the cement floor. We had the cement floor uh, diamond cut, and then we had the uh, uh, epoxy floor put on. So I don't want to do that. So we decided we're going to go ahead and just put the – we're putting the glue down, the, the uh, and then we're putting the treated uh, one by threes that we've got as a base, and then we're putting the pegboard on top of that, and then we have – We've got the uh, furring strips. We've got some treated furring strips to go up against the uh, the metal, <clears throat> and we're uh, uh, you know having to use screws for everything. So that's that's uh, uh, that's that's what happens uh, when when we're doing that. And it's just take just time consuming. It it takes a lot more time to do that than it would be the you know, if I were just slapping up two by fours and two by sixes or whatever, I could go bam, bam, bam and nail them up with, I've got the power nailers and everything. I could, I could be done with the job, but because we're trying to take our time and get this pegboard, right. It's probably taken three times the, uh, the amount of time to get it up and to make sure that I have it right. But I want it screwed up as opposed to nailed up because if there is any modifications or if something goes bad, something gets broken on a pegboard, I want to be able to unscrew it and you know replace the panel or whatever we're going to do at the time so i i am going with the uh, screws that goes into the aluminum and goes into the fur and strips as opposed to uh the uh instead of uh, going straight into the uh uh, uh metal and everything like that so it, it is a time consuming way of doing it but i think in the long run you know even though i've taken this extra time it's going to be well worth it um, I mean, you know, some, some jobs you just, you, you can't shortcut it. And that's, this is one of them. I, I, I feel like that if we do that, that we're going to have, I'm, I'm going to slide up a little bit. I keep slide. I got a cushion that keeps sliding down with me. I'm getting lower and lower into the seat. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I guess, I guess the, the, you know, a lot of people talk about the gas guzzler S SUVs. There are some out there that are bad, but you know, there's, there's some that are coming along that are pretty good. I mean, they, they've made the mandate, I think, to get these fleets up to a, gosh, what was it? It, it was way up there. It has, has changed the dynamics of what the new trucks. I mean, I mean, perfect example, JC could probably give you an example of how much fuel mileage, uh, that some of these trucks are getting now he's driven so many different ones especially on the ford side and he's got dodge and ford and i think he even has a couple of gmc's but the the big trucks you know our big trucks out there are still hovering around six miles to the gallon that's about what you get six six and a half that's about the best now you'll get some that'll get seven and you know depending on the loads and everything else like that they'll they'll get it and you know the uh Elon Musk is trying to come out with the electric truck, which I hope he does. I hope I'd like to see that get on the market and let's see if we can get some infrastructure to, uh, uh, to accommodate that. And if you look at the overall amount of uh, fuel consumption and, uh, you know, I'm one to talk about this, I guess, because of my age, I mean, cars, 
in the 60s, on average, were probably, I mean, I'm talking cars, not trucks, but you'd get your average sedan. You'd get a LTD or, or a big Caprice or a Bonneville Pontiac or some of these truck cars. They would get nine to 10 to 12 miles a gallon. That was tops for, for cars back then. And, you know, people were, were had the big, you know, 400 cube engines. They weren't efficient. You know, we weren't worried about it. We had plenty of gas and everybody was gas guzzling back, really gas guzzling. And then in the early 70s, when the oil embargo hit, uh, you can look this up, know about it firsthand. I, I sat in lines because of this. And I think I think it was uh, it was during the Nixon administration. I know that. So that would be. Uh, I want to say 72, 73, that's when the oil embargo hit and gas went from, and this is what I used to buy gas at 28 cent a gallon up to a dollar, dollar and a half. And it, it, it just devastated the country. I mean, you, you're talking about almost overnight that fuel tripled or quadrupled and the amount of fuel was diminished because the, of the embargo. And so you had two factors. You had fuel, like I said, almost quadrupling. And you got to take this in consideration. I mean, you're hearing, oh, yeah, they only went from 28 cents on up to a dollar and something. But you got to remember, we were not making the money that people are making right now. In 1973, I was making top union wages. Top union wages in 1973 was $4 an hour, $4 an hour. And I was working on the dock as a teamster at $4 an hour. And, you know, so you're, you're looking, that's 160 a week. That's what I grossed. And that was way different than, uh, you know, what, what, you know, the average person can consume at this time. You, you can look, you look at, you look at it, uh, like I said, my fuel bill went, you know, if you quadruple my fuel bill uh, for my cars, I mean, it, it was devastating, uh, regardless of the price. Now, I've, I've heard people say, oh, well, yeah, you only went from 28 cent up to a dollar and something. But you've got to look at the dynamics of it to what the wage earner was making at that time. Uh, we, anytime you take any one factor and quadruple it or double it or triple it or whatever. And that's an essential product. In other words, if you were to take milk and quadruple the cost of milk, uh, then that would devastate that part of the market. And, you know, your consumables like fuel and, and food, anytime those are, you, you kind of uh, dicker around with the price on those things, it can really upset the apple cart as far as the economy. And I saw the, you know, I, I've had the uh, fortune and misfortune to be, uh, you know, in in and out of these markets like this. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's that's about what it would be like, Brian. It'd be like paying 150 bucks to uh, to fill up a Ford Focus right now. I mean, you know, and that's that's the uh, it, it's all relative, like JC says. We, we have to make more money, and that's what we're doing now. Most people are making way more money. And, you know, I, I just I hear these uh, protests, oh, we got to make $15 an hour minimum wage. And I'm thinking $15 an hour. It just seems like yesterday that that was a huge top pay for uh, unions. I mean, I remember when people got to $15 an hour. I'm thinking, man, a lot. They're really making some good money now. And, you know, it, it's, it just – it goes on and on and on. I mean, we all, uh, uh, you know, you, you don't realize it. I mean, anytime they raise that minimum wage, it raises the cost of living right up behind it. I mean, the minimum wage uh, people, I mean, I, I want people to be able to make a good living. Don't get me wrong. But you cannot uh, base the economy on minimum wage uh, because once you do that, then you escalate the cost of everything else. I mean, it, 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 it goes, if you raise them, you know, here's minimum wage. Here's where everybody else. So you raise this up, that's going to go up. You raise that up, that's going to go. Up. That's, that's the way it does every single time. 
I mean, it, it doesn't take a, uh, you know, you know, it's, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out the, the things. I mean, I remember when minimum wage was 50 cent an hour, 50 cents an hour, not a dollar, 50 cent an hour is what minimum wage was. And, you know, that, uh, and then I remember when it got up over, well, to give you an example, I used to be a school bus driver down here, uh, in high school, they would let us uh, drive school buses back then. You'd get your school bus license and drive in the afternoon after you got out of school. And, uh, you know, I remember that we got paid $28 a month, $28 a month for driving the school bus. But $28 a month in 1967, decent amount of money for a, a teenager. And I, then I also uh, hopped curb. Uh, in other words, like, you know, you've seen the old things. If you watch Happy Days where the guys going out or, or like Sonic still does, you know, uh, you know, have people going out to cur uh, curb and, and delivering your food. I did that. That was a popular thing back in the 60s. So I was a curb hop uh, back in the 60s and at, at a local restaurant called Blackwoods down here and one called Blacks. Uh, and I used to do that, loved it. I made 50 cent an hour. That's what I made. I made 50 cent an hour plus tips and one of the best jobs I ever had in my life. And, but you've got to relate, uh, you know, your satisfaction with your job, the amount of money you need, the amount of money you work at. And there, there's always opportunity that if you take that opportunity and you're able to capitalize on it, uh, I, I don't care what industry you're in, you you got to grasp that opportunity and you got to go with it. I mean, I, I have people that ask me all the time, why am I still out here working? You know, I've, I've been proud to say I'm 67 years old and I feel young. I feel, I, I know 67, most guys are saying, Hey, I'm laid back at the beach, whatever. It's not my, it's not my way of doing business. I, I've never been that way. Uh, when I had the physical ability, I was like JC. I was out there working, working my keister off, uh, physically. And, and you do that as long as you can. And then it wears on you a little bit. Uh, I used to drive a lot. I mean, I, I used to, uh, <clears throat> uh, I used, I used to drive a lot. I used to get out and work, uh, at Carolina freight. Like I said, I was making the, the wages as a yard switcher and, Back then, now DOT won't let you do this now, but I would work eight hours, an eight hour shift with them as a yard switcher okay. and then go out and drive eight hours. Well, they, of course, they uh, put the, uh, <clears throat> you know, DOT and a lot of them put the, the stop to that kind of stuff. They wouldn't let you double dip. But I, I did that for years. I would work a 16 hour shift, <clears throat> eight of it being uh, working on the yard and eight of it being, you know, driving, driving a truck. And loved it because I was double dipping. I was getting out there and I was making, uh, I was making some good money. And <laughs> yeah, I, I Walter talking about yeah school, you know, and that and that's a really strange thing too because uh, school kids were good. I was a school bus driver as a high school school uh, student, you know, and the students actually would listen to me pretty good. And of course I did some things I probably couldn't get away with nowadays. I used to tap the old brake to quieten them down. And, uh, I'd learned that from other bus drivers. Uh, you know, the, when, when, when you, the kids were getting too noisy and everything, you'd tell them quieten down or whatever you tap your brakes and they'd kind of shudder, you know, they go, Ooh, what's that? You know? And, uh, but I don't think you can do things like that nowadays. Uh, uh, schools, Schools have uh, really gone uh, crazy as far as letting the, the kids and the kids rule the schools and as, instead of the teachers and everything. My, my wife was a school teacher. I, I can throw this two bits in there. My wife taught math uh, for 32 years. She retired about 10 years ago and went into the trucking business with me and helped me expand my trucking business. So uh, we uh, we have, and that's why we have multiple contracts with uh, FedEx. I've got 
three contracts with FedEx right now. Getting ready to downsize, we're going to uh, sell one contract to the other. And this, this is a FedEx thing. And uh, we have brought on some new partners and a few things like that. You People that have listened to me in the past, they've heard me talk about our, our partners. we got a young couple that's coming in and they're helping us. And that, that's sort of my retirement exit plan, I guess you might say. I, I, I never want to think about an exit plan, but I, I have to be realistic about it. So I'm, uh, you know, I, I enjoy my work. And that's the reason I, I guess I, I regret ever thinking about retirement. And I guess my parts house somewhat is my semi-retirement because of the fact that I can st- stay here maybe a little more and, uh, you know, sit back in my office if I want to. Can't do it all the time. But the, my parts house is probably my retirement, so to speak, uh, if, if anything would be, because it would give him, it would give me uh, an opportunity to kind of sit down and relax a little bit, kick back a little bit. Don't want to do too much of that because I, I don't want to be so uh, dormant that I, I find myself uh, physically not able to do things, but I do have to physically slow down at my age because uh, <laughs> I can tell you one thing. I'm, I'm going to show you something. I'll show you something I came up with uh, guys. Now, th- this this will relate back to, uh, uh, and the reason I'm going to show you this, as we get older, our knees wear out. Our knees are the one thing that really wears out first. And I kind of combined something yesterday, and I said, hey, that's pretty ingenious. I'm going to show you. I'm just going to pass this on. So I'm going to pass this on to you right now. Oh. Let me get out of my chair. Get out of my chair and s- step up here. This, this is what happens when you get old. You, uh, like I say, your knees, I'll show you what I'm on. Here's our fur and strips that we're putting up, if y'all can see. Now, what I've had to do, um, I'm going to show you this. Of course, I'm, I'm doing it with metal, and I had to countersink. I had to go get me a countersink. Countersink these uh, sheet metal screws because I want to use sheet metal screws and get the rigidity and everything, and I want to have this good and tight. And then we're, we're going ahead and not worrying about this. Uh, I'm going ahead and leaving the sheet metal screws on the outside of this. They, they don't look the best, but when you put this thing completely through pegboard, it's not going to matter as much. And the uh, fact that I use a sheet metal screw, I can uh, take this off and on real easy. But here, I'm going to show you my little, uh, not invention, so to speak. I'm going to show you. <laughs> uh, I bought uh, some tables the other day and they had this real heavy styrofoam. So uh, let me reach down here and grab it. The styrofoam is about probably two or three inches thick, but it is ideal. It is ideal for getting down. And if you'll, let me look, let me turn it down here on the floor. It's ideal. And you see, I've got two of them. You might even see my impressions of my knees. What I'm doing, I'm using that as a, a knee pad and, and or as a knee cushion because my knees go out on me uh, real easy if I don't. And I can't put my knees down on cement floor. I can tell you that. I'm not young enough to do that. It would kill me to uh, get down there and work on, on the cement floor. So what I've done, and I will sit back down. What I what I did, I, I took the uh, the big heavy styrofoam, and this made me up, just cut it up into little sizes I could slide across the uh, cement floor, and yep, a redneck knee pads is what it is, <laughs> and and it, to me it was easier than I've got the old knee pads that you strap on, but even those are are uncomfortable, and this you know I can just uh, get myself positioned down there on the floor. And I can slide across the cement floor with those. And I, so I was sliding. I was like a little, little knee, knee skis, I guess you might say. Uh, uh, how many diesel mechanics? Well, I already have. Uh, see, I have two shops right now, Ponka. I'll tell you that. I, see, I have uh, uh, five diesel mechanics working for me right now. Uh, so I'll, I'll tell you that. And... Uh, the, uh, 
uh, those mechanics will just transition over here to my new shop. I'm on, I'm going to transition everything I have. I, if you go back and look at my, some of my old videos, you'll see some of my old shops. Uh, well, I, they're not old. I actually have one that I just built three years ago. I've had my first shop I built. Uh, let's see how old is my grand, my grandson's 13. So I, I built it about 14 or 15 years ago. I built my first shop and it was a, uh, just a, a, a good size at the time. It was a, I think it's 80, 60 by 80 uh, uh, building with uh, two door, two garage door bays, two bay. And uh, I should have put three, but I didn't. I only put two on it. My, I get fussed at. I, I left one section over there for sort of parts and everything at the time and sort of an office. And now I don't need that as much. I, I could have used the uh, garage doors really. But that being said, uh, uh, you know, I, I've got five mechanics. I got five full-time mechanics uh, that work on my trucks because I have a fleet. My, my, I have a fleet of about forty-something trucks. I had, I kind of had to keep a count of them. I, I'd gotten up to about sixty-something trucks and sold off about twenty, eighteen or twenty at a sale this year. Uh, they were getting old. I mean, I, I'm, I'm counting all the trucks that I own, not. Uh, uh, not the ones that I had in the fleet. I, I maintain I maintain about thirty eight to forty uh, trucks with FedEx. I have twenty eight routes. I believe it is twenty seven, twenty eight routes. And the reason I have forty some trucks, it takes that many trucks to help maintain that many routes because uh, you'll have uh, you know clutch jobs. <laughs> uh, you stand on concert, start on over concert. Oh, 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 I hope that's concrete. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, I know it. Uh, yeah. The, uh, are you in Oklahoma? Yeah. We're, we're packed up too. We're, we're, uh, uh concrete in the winter. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's the way to be. I tell you, it's styrofoam. And I, fortunately for me, I got a styrofoam place that's right, uh, right behind me almost. Uh, that actually, I ought to go over and get scraps. They actually make, uh, they make the styrofoam or, or the, uh, they make the insulation behind BMWs for one. I know they got a contract with BMW, but your dashes and everything, they, they actually make the form fitted uh, styrofoam that they put the leather around and everything. And, or whatever that I don't know if they call it styrofoam, but you know the um, all that insulation that's in between that they they're big into that. But you know the the uh, as far as mechanics, yeah, I, I've got uh, yeah, I, I, I hope that the the, the store has been a, a good move. It uh, yeah, <laughs> I like what mechanic Mike said up there. Yeah, getting down's easy; it's getting back up, and that is. The older we get, the getting back up is the hard part. I mean, it, uh, you, you need to protect your knee, your knees and your hips and everything are so valuable as you get older. I mean, uh, I, you, you, a person has to watch their weight. I've got to drop my weight, and my doctor's been after me to drop a few more pounds. Uh, one for diabetes problems; you don't want to get diabetes, and two because your your joints will start wearing out and <clears throat> you know, a lot of, I'm going to take a little swig here a second. Whoops. I splashed Mountain Dew on my glass there. Got a little bit of diet Mountain Dew. I know a lot of people drink Mountain Dew, diet Mountain Dew. Down here, a lot of people drink Sundrop, which is twice the uh, the caffeine. <laughs> it, it's like a, boot. It, it is a booster out there as far as caffeine. If you want to get something that uh, uh, it's it's about like these power colas or whatever. I used to drink so many sun drops. Um, I was out working one day and this back, gosh, just 20 something years ago. My, my brother-in-law was a doctor and I was out. We were out doing some work and my, my heart was just running away with me. And he he looked at me and he says, he checked me out a little bit and he said, get off of those sun drops. He said, you drink way too many of them. And uh, 
I have, tw- I think, 28 routes. Uh, now, I've got the tractor trailer. I don't have – I don't run the small package van, Ponka, I'll tell you that. I have I have the uh, – uh, I have the uh, tractor trailer over the road trucks. I've, I've got routes going – I have a lot of routes going into Tennessee. I have a, a lot of routes going to Savannah, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, a few going to Lexington, Virginia, uh, Beckley, West Virginia. Uh, I have some going to Lumberton, Charleston, uh, like I said, Savannah or Richmond Hill. Uh, yeah, I have, uh, it, it's, it's long hauls to a degree. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Walter, I'm 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 right there too. I'm I'm right there. My A1C is borderline, so I I I try to control it through my diet. I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables and and try to get a little exercise. Uh, yeah, now that that's what I, my doctor had me. I dropped 25 pounds uh from March from March until May May, May 1st of June. I dropped 25 pounds by just getting off uh bread is the main thing bread is the main you know a lot of people love bread and then when you tell people to get off bread it it it's a processed food and it is the worst food for diabetes uh so if you can cut back i mean if you had to cut back one item just cut out bread and your your life would be a lot easier as as far as diabetes problem so i i would say that uh if I were to tell somebody just one thing to cut out, I mean, you can eat meat. I eat, I eat steaks. I eat meat. I, you know, fish. You know, what, whatever you want to eat, eat all that, but just cut back bread, and then you would be amazed at how much you would drop in uh, pounds, and, and as far as your A one C would be, uh, processed food. Processed food is. Uh, the worst thing and see bread is processed food uh your grains your rice uh your rice your bread your and, you know a lot of people eat a lot of cereal cereal is it, it kind of you know it, we kind it's kind of crazy certain cereals help you out because they keep your digestive system in good shape and but you don't want to overdo that but just just the old typical sandwich the bread the hamburger that's i mean if you want a hamburger get get a hamburger and get the patty don't get the bread i've I've eaten that i've gone to wendy's and, and you, believe it or not you get it way cheaper too i i usually uh i go to wendy's sometimes if, if i'm at, at a fast food and i need something to eat and i'll say can i have three hamburger patties and i'll eat three hamburger patties or ham or put cheese on them it doesn't matter just leave off the bread and then just get ketchup, put ketchup on it. And that's way better than uh, eating the bread. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's about it. 75% vegetable and 25% protein. That's where you need to be. I, I mean, I, I get, I go to, uh, we have a food line down here and that's food line, Harris Teeter and some of these their restaurant or the uh, grocery stores. Uh, but food line is right next next to me down here, and we I go down there and get a fruit tray, and it has watermelon, cantaloupe, uh, some of the other fruits in there. What's that other one? The green one. <laughs> I can't think of uh, melon. Uh, it's uh, what is that? Honeydew melon. I think honeydew melon. It's got by others, and you know I do that and I slice it up and eat. Yeah, honeydew. That's that's what I was trying to say. Uh, Honey, do I think it's D E W, but do would be fine too. Honey, do, but uh, but I, I eat that and uh, I eat yogurt. I, I like yogurt. Uh, I get I got black cherry yogurt. Don't I shouldn't say that. Everybody start getting all of my black cherry yogurt, but I get uh, black cherry yogurt, uh, fruit, and then I like to you know eat, eat uh, my local restaurant. I get a lot a lot of green beans, uh, you know. Instead of getting French fries, get green beans if they offer it. So that's what I do. I, I don't. I don't. I don't eat French fries much. That's the other thing. The starch, the starchy foods, the uh, you know the rice and the potatoes and stuff like that. Stay away from that, and you know it helps. I mean, I mean, guys, we're only going to be out here so long, and you need to think about your health. Uh, 
I mean, especially if you're in the trucking industry uh, or any of these others, I mean, I mean, your health is, is everything. If you don't, uh, if you don't keep that up, you, you, you know, you're going to be like a lot of my friends. I, I have, you know, at my age, I, I have started losing a lot of friends, uh, uh, guys that I went to high school with. I mean, it's, it's a crying shame to, uh, uh, you know, it's a crying shame to, uh, uh, see how many uh, high school classmates that I've lost in the past 20 years. I mean, it's, it's tremendous. And, uh, yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying, Brian. Yeah. When, when all your friends start dying off, I had one, uh, one of my good friends, he actually got killed. He, uh, he had an accident. He had, he was out mowing the other day and flipped a, a zero turn mower over on top of him into a lake. His, his dad had a lake. He was doing his dad's um, yard and his daddy had told him, don't get down there too close to the lake. And unfortunately, buddy was, uh, uh, too close and flipped the mower over on top of himself in the lake. We don't know if it, if it, it, it broke his neck or drowned him or whatever, but by the time he was dead, by the time they caught him, you know, it's really, really sad. And he was my age. I went, uh, went to school, uh, at the same time, but we both graduated high school at the same time. He went to a, an adjoining school, but his dad and my dad were good friends and went to high school together. And so we were real good friends and, he, he lived not too far from here. And so it was real. It was, that was a tough one for me to see that he, he was a real, he was a real go getter. He was like JC uh, Smith that we've talked about. Uh, 